status report. We have the uh, uh, cabinet level on this uh, Logan lathe. We've got the bed level. And I'm just waiting some, for some parts uh, from Logan actuator to get the uh, power feeds working. And then we'll take some cuts and see where it's at. But uh, I did uh, t take a four jaw chuck. This is the uh, Jet four jaw chuck that came with the machine. Cleaned it up a little bit. I still haven't uh, taken the rust off yet, but uh, and this will be what we're using to dial in this end of our test bar. And to dial it in, we use the key, of course. And uh, I don't know where I saw it somewhere on the internet, maybe, but they mentioned about having two chuck keys on these four jaws, one for each side, and then you can really dial it in here, turn it, dial in these two, and iterate. And that's what a lot of this stuff is: is iterating. Uh, to get things just right. So the problem is I only have one chuck key and so what we're going to do today is make another chuck key so that we'll have one for each side and this is kind of how this uh, machine has been with all of my tools and stuff in storage. It seems like to to work something out here I have to make something uh, in order to be able to work on it. So that's kind of my life right now, I guess, is uh, um, uh, make a tool in order to use a tool. Uh, let's go over to the bench now and take a look at what this project looks like. All right, well, we're here at the bench, and this is what we're going to end up making, a second one of these, and this is a square drive uh, on the key. Uh, the um, stock that I'm going to use, I pulled out of the boneyard uh, scrap pile and I don't even know what kind of metal it is, uh, some kind of steel and uh, we took the uh, hardness tester, our new file, and it's sharp and you can see it files easily so it's it's not a terribly hard material and we should be okay um, working with this. I also went and bought a new file. I needed a new file anyway. This is the Mill Bastard. And uh, picked this up, got the handle for it, so we'll be okay there. Um, what we're going to do is uh, take this down to this diameter, which is about 320, uh, something like that, 325. And then to get these flats on here, we'll just put it into a vise and, and we'll use the... Uh, file for that final dimensioning. We'll draw it out on the end and then cut to the lines and see until it works. Um, and I saw on uh, Mr. Pete 222 where he made a handle uh, out of a, one of these kind of bolts. So I got this at the hardware store and we'll just uh, drill a hole through here, put that through and you know we'll have these all rounded off and cleaned up and, uh, and that'll work as our handle. Uh, and I have the drill bit. I have the drill bit right here, and center drill right here. So we've got everything we need to do this project. We'll actually be using the lathe in order to make this tool for the lathe. But uh, it's a simple operation. It doesn't involve much in the way of turning. Uh, just a little bit at the end here, and then uh, cleaning these up with the file. So should be uh, fairly straightforward. All right, back to the machine. Well, I have here uh, from my old shop class uh, years ago, uh, this is how to decide uh, what your cutting speed should be. So there's the formula for RPM, and it's four times the cutting speed for that material divided by the diameter of the work. And uh, so in this case, we've got, um, I'm figuring this is probably mild steel, coal, something like that, and we have a carbide cutter, and so it says here, cutting speed is 200 plus. I go back to the formula here, it's um, four times the cutting speed, which would be 800, divided by the diameter, and this piece is about, um, I think it's 5'8", 625 thousandths. So I'm gonna figure that's about half an inch, and. So um, we got 800 divided by the diameter of a half. That takes us up to a pretty fast speed of about 1,600. Well, this doesn't go to 1,600. So we're going to put it as fast as it'll go, which is at 1,450. 
and I'll get that set up and then we'll take some cuts. All right, here we are. We've got our uh, cutting speed selected. That's the fastest speed we can go on this machine. It's an interrupted cut, so it'll be kind of rough for a little while, but we'll see what happens here. Okay, there's our zero. And one of the problems with the Logans is the uh, dials are so small, you never know how far you're, you're in there. We'll go ahead and take it in, say, uh, 20 thousandths. See what happens. This is just a test cut. See the chips are starting to come off a little more of elongated. It means we're getting close. If we haven't got to the uh, round yet and got rid of the interrupted cut, we're pretty darn close to it. it looks like we're there. So we're going to stop and measure this. See where we're at. The calipers are good enough for this, and we're at 590. We need to get it down to uh, 365, so we got quite a ways to go. more to go. Okay, we're at 380 now. So we have another 15 thousandths to take off. And we'll do that with uh, one pass because it's not a critical dimension. And uh, we'll do the best we can. This uh, lathe has really small um, dials. And they're in double reading, so there'd be 10. That would be about 15 right there. Should do it. The other thing I want to do is go ahead and take down the uh, square part here a little bit just to clean it up, make it look a little nicer. Find the edge on it. Right there. Start taking that down. This is not fine work, so we're just kind of roughing it here. Making it work. All right, well, we're here at the uh, bench. I've got the uh, handle in the vise here, and I don't have any die cam, so I'm going to mark this up so we can kind of see where we're at. I'm using the uh, dry eraser, and it seems to cover fairly well. I tried the uh, Sharpie, but it it just uh, was a mess. So we know that this piece of metal is uh, 625 thousandths. So we set this at 3, 12 and a half to get it halfway across. And then we're just going to drag this. So we scribe a line into there. And coming the other way, it doesn't take much, a uh, little square like this is fine, and uh, scribe. Bring that up a little bit. So we're going to put a the uh, hole for the handle, make it so it's about the same length as this one, so it would be right up around here. 
in. It's not real critical. Okay, so there's that. Now we're going to mark it. Okay, and we'll widen it out a little bit here. Then we're going to uh, center drill it to get it started, and then we'll switch over to the other drill. And I don't have a drill press right now, so I'm just going to have to do all this by hand as best I can, and I'll do that off camera here. Back at the bench here, we have, uh, uh, I actually pulled this nut off when we were still in the uh, chuck, so it did come out, and, and it does fit through there, so we'll have a nice handle to, uh, to use, and then this will go back on with some Loctite, so it won't fall off, and that'll keep it on, and I think I will uh, take the hacksaw and cut this off about here, uh, just because it makes it a little neater. Uh, I took the uh, counter bore just by hand and knocked the uh, edges off of the hole here, smoothed that out just a little bit. And so now we've got this, uh, this part's ready to go there. We're going to set that aside for now and look at making this end. The uh, round part here on the end is 365 thousandths of an inch. And we want to get that down to two flats here and the distance between the two flats at 3125 thousandths of an inch or 312, 310, somewhere in there. So the difference between those two is 52 thousandths roughly, and since we're taking half off of this side and half off of that side, we end up we need to take about 26 thousandths off of each side. And then we'll do the same thing, of course, in this direction. Uh, if I'd have thought of it, uh, I would have laid this out before we uh, took it down to this dimension. That would have been a smart thing to do, but I didn't uh, do that. And so about all I can think of to do is take off a little bit on each side until we uh, approach the 26 thousandths. And as soon as it fits in the chuck uh, easily, then I'm going to stop. So what we're going to do is put it in the vise and start filing away on this thing. OK, we're going to stop there and turn it. 180. Hopefully we can get these two sides to be about 310 to 315. And then we'll do the other two sides and see how it looks. Well, here we have it, um, the finished tool. I did uh, file this down so it fits. Let's see, it works fine in there. It'll turn it. The um, what I would have done if I had it, I would have faced this and marked it off before, um, before cutting it down. I did polish. I ended up polishing all of this and taking the uh, rust off, cut this off, uh, and faced it. This is Loctited on, so we do have a handle there. And, uh, but a couple of things. I would have done this, marked it off first, and I probably would have used round stock instead of square stock stock just so it matches a little better but the, it does work and the whole idea here was to get it in here like so and the other one on the other side so that when you're adjusting your four jaw chuck you can just instead of having to spin it all the time you can use your indicator and move the workpiece wherever you want it and so that's been accomplished uh, what I'll do now is I'll be cleaning up the chuck here, and then we'll get set up to do some uh, test cuts just to see uh, if, how close we are in level and do some final adjustments on the, uh, on the leveling.